Hi everyone and welcome back to NodeFlow. So today we'll learn a very useful technique if you're planning on creating a procedural city or if you just want some quick integers with super responsive render times. So parallax shading is a shading trick that allows us to fake depth by making it look like the interiors of a building in 3D, while instead only an image is being used to achieve this effect. So first of all, how does a parallax texture even look like? Well, it's a simple image with a one-to-one -one ratio divided in a tree by tree. In this way, we have a total of nine spaces that we can fill with whatever map we like in a software like Photoshop. Luckily for us, Houdini already provides us with a map so that we can test our system. But for now, let's go in Houdini and let's start creating our first node. In Houdini, I will just create a geo node. I will then call it simple window. I will go inside and I will just create a grid. To make a window, we need to rotate it. So change the orientation to YZ plane. Then I will just reduce the divisions to two by two. And then I will just create a room map frame. So this node is essential. It's the most important one that we need to use in SOPs before going into shading. If you check your attribute spreadsheet, you have a bunch of attributes that have been created down here. In order to visualize them, I can click here on visualize and you see we have different vectors that have been created. The first one, the red one, is called tangent u. Then we have the green one that's called tangent b and then we also have a normal and that's the room normal. I'm calling them in this way because technically if you check here, these are the name that they have. And lastly, we also have a number over here. This number in this case would be the same of a primitive number that you can visualize it by clicking here but technically these attributes is the room id the room id is very important it will be explained better in the next video but for now let's just consider this one as an id that gives this room a specific texture let's disable visualize and let's just create a null node down here now this null will be named out window and then i will just hold n and i will go into lops now that i am in solaris i can just create a soap import i will then import my out window i will just name it window again i will just create a material library so i can assign a material to it and clicking here on assign to geometry i will click here on the arrow and that will let me choose a geometry that i want to assign my material to so i'll press enter in the viewport and now that my material has been assigned i can go inside and i can create a karma material builder i will then give it a name i will name it parallax i want to give it a color maybe like a purple i think it's fine and let's go inside so let's remove everything that we don't need we already know that we don't have displacement we won't use any material properties and we won't need any inputs so i will just delete all of them and because we want everything to look as a glass i will also lower the roughness a lot so maybe like a zero 0.02 for now. Apart from this one, we don't need to touch anything else inside the snow surface as everything will be done in another node called the Karma Room Map. This node is where all the magic happens. I can now connect my color output to my base color and my normals to my normals down here. Amazing. To make this node work, you see, we already have a texture here. So that's the one that Houdini provides us. And if I press render, I expect to see a texture, nothing happens. And that's because we still need to add our position, tangent, and by tangent. And these are the attributes that were created before in SOPs. So in order to import them here, I will use the geometry property value. I will then choose the signature as a vector tree because I already know they are vectors and I will choose tangent u. I will connect this one into the tangent. I will then duplicate it and this will be my tangent v or also called by tangent. So I will connect it here. And lastly, we need to import our position that is not just p, it's our room p. And be mindful of the upper cases. Then I will connect it into the position. And now if I try to render, you'll see this beautiful effect. So this is like just a 3D look, but of course it's just a texture, you see. And this is way more efficient than creating an interior like that, because of course right now we just have a texture that looks like a simple cube with back, right, top, and whatever. But when it gets more complex, imagine something like a building, right? You have lots of geometry for the interiors, while this one is very, very useful to make everything super quick to render. But let's see more complex stuff. So first of all, the normals are a little bit weird. So we have a control here to mix the normals with the outside lighting. Although right now we don't have a lighting, I found uh, a value of zero 0.4 is very nice. Then you'll notice we have some scale over here. So if I change the scale in the Z axis, you can see I'm able to change the scale of the whole room. It looks quite nice. So same on the Y axis and you guessed it also on the X axis. What happens if you want to assign like different textures? So that would be our next setup. So let's actually stop the render for now and I will go in SOPs again. I will now create a new geometry node and this one will be my building. I will hide my simple window and I will go inside. So here I will create just a simple grid 
But there is a little thing that we need to remember. So of course I can change the rotation to YZ. So I will change it from here to 20 and then here I will put something like 30. Nice. Now that it looks a little bit more as a building facade, we need to separate all these faces. So there is a note to do that and that's the point split. So if I connect it, of course it will not be very apparent what's going on over here. That's why we can check that everything worked by creating a connectivity followed by an exploded view and now if you visualize the exploded view you will see all of them are separated you see without the split points nothing will really work they will just be considered as one single block so that's what the split point is doing so i will just delete this one for now and i will continue with the room map frame we already know this node if we visualize it, we see the only thing that really changed is that we have different numbers over here. So that means they will all be treated as a different one. And now I can stop visualizing that and I will simply create another node. And this will be my out building. That's nice. I will then hold N and go back into LOPS. And here I will just duplicate this setup. So over here, this will be named building. And I just want to reference my building. Nice. We have an error because technically it's assigned to window. So we want to assign it correctly again to our building over here. And and then if we go inside, we can also try to render for the sake of that. So if I now press render, you can see they're all treated as different rooms. And to make it a little bit more apparent, if we didn't use the split point, this will look something like that. So just as a single huge room, that's not really what we want. That's why the split point is essential. This is something that I've not really found on the documentation. So I really hope this is a nice tip for you. Now, if we were to do material, let's see actually how to change the textures because right now, first of all, we have only one texture available from side effects, but I will also share with you in the description, like a, a pack of different textures that are free that you can use to do this example and to follow along. The only thing is that we need to create a setup with some noise in order to scatter the different textures randomly across this surface. So let's see what we need to do. So for now, I will just stop the render. I will then move all of this over here and I want to edit my room position. So over here, I also want to add a multiplier and I will change the vector tree to vector tree FA. So it will be easier to multiply all the three components by a number and I will choose 50. And then I will create a Voro noise. It would be our noise and it needs to be 3D. And then I will change the signature to vector tree. These are just values that worked for me. Then of course, based on the size of your panel, you should change the frequency. So for now, the frequency I found out that worked in my case was 0.004 on all the axes. Nice. Now I just want actually to extract the X axis. So I want to create a separate vector tree. And now that I can separate the X axis, I want to create a range node to remap it correctly. So this is very simple. We just need to set it into the out high the number of textures that you will be using. So in my case, I will be using four textures. So I will just change it to four. And I will also check the option do clamp. And technically this can be connected into the room offset. We still don't have our textures connected over here. So first of all, there are some things on texture that are very important. Otherwise, all of this won't work. A texture needs to be EXR. And also we will use the UDIM syntax to actually refer to a bunch of different textures that share the same ending. So like 1001, 1002, 1003. For instance, if I now open my windows over here and I check my downloads, I have these textures and I will be using the night ones. So you see, they are very well named. So I had to name them particularly to make Houdini able to find all, all of them together. And now if I just copy this buff and if I go here, I can now just paste this one. If you choose show sequences as one entry, you will see all of them will be collapsed. And I want to choose UDIM. Then I will go here into the night ones and I will just click on accept. And now that we have this way of writing it, actually, we're not just importing the 1001 or the 1002, we are importing all of them and they will be randomized based on the noise that we applied. So to check this effect, we can finally press render. And as you can see, we are importing all the maps. Let's give Karma some time to load. But we are importing all the maps and we are also randomizing their placement. Of course, you will be able to see repetitions and that's normal because we have just four textures and we are scattering on top of like, I don't know how many they are. So in more complex setups, make sure to create more textures. And again, that will be one topic for the next video when we'll see how to create our own textures. As a last step, I will just also plug my normals. So all of this is based from the side effects documentation. So if I add a material X normals, this should be connected into the code normal and that will technically help with the reflections. And lastly, let's try to play with these parameters. If you use P3, you have more repetition, at least to my understanding. Using distance, that works better for me. But again, experiment with all of this and you probably also see some black ones appearing. And that's technically a good thing. You see, like if I go into distance and I try to change the range to something higher than four, you see maybe something like five, 
say six because we don't have any texture here we're just using four textures this is very useful if you want to make it look like some of them are turned on and some of them are actually off so for now i will leave it a five because i just want some black ones so that's all for today guys i really hope you learned something new i really think this is very very interesting and it has lots of potential in the next video we'll make our own textures in photoshop we'll also show how to add slices as you can see over here and then we'll also join multiple windows to make them look as they are part of the same room again i really hope you enjoyed if you did if you learned something new again please leave a like and subscribe it really means a lot and really helps us to understand if you like this kind of contents and so I will see you in the next one. Cheers.